we did not see the bus go off the road, but as we passed it, I said, hey, you know, we could see a crowd of people. There is a bus down there, we have to stop. And at first our driver was kind of like, uh. I said, no, you have to stop. Because you could tell it was an extremely unstable situation. On Saturday, May 6th, a Tanzanian bus full of children, 35 children and three adults, plummeted into a ravine. Of those on the bus, only three children survived. Providentially, there was a group of short-term missionaries from STEM, Siouxland, Tanzania Educational Medical Ministries, and they came upon the accident. You're dealing with really dead body after dead body coming up that you can't do anything with other than dignify them as much as possible while they're laying there. The healing part for us who were at the scene has really been the three survivors. They knew right away that these three children that survived out of the 35 had significant injuries that could not possibly be treated in Tanzania. This case gripped the nation of Tanzania. Doreen, seventh grade girl, probably had the worst injuries. The other girl was Sadia. She had a good attitude, but the pain was really getting to her. And then there was Wilson. Wilson has a great big smile. He had multiple compound fractures that had not been set or, or healed at all. And we needed these children to be managed as soon as possible because all of them had several bones which are broken. So Dr. Steve Meyer and his team rapidly began making phone calls, trying to find a way to get these kids to the United States where they could have adequate medical care. We were so committed to do this, and we had both ends covered. The Tanzanian government not only agreed, but actually pushed us to do this for their children. Mercy Hospital said, whatever it takes, we will operate, we'll counsel these kids. The Siouxland community, Ronald McDonald House, all opened up their arms. All we had to do was connect the two ends. Now there's this possibility of getting them to America for the care that they need. And it just became a roller coaster. And so when Samaritan's Purse came through and you know we heard that, yes, this is a possibility, I mean, that was incredible healing. Franklin Graham was able to direct our DC-8. It's a cargo plane that has a good number of seats on it to Tanzania to pick these kids up and bring them to the United States. What you are witnessing today is a miracle that has fallen upon a country of 50 million people. Nobody believed it was going to happen. And we are all grateful as a nation for the mission of the Samaritan Pass. Samaritan Pass, I think God sent you. We don't have enough words to say thank you. We were able to fly from Tanzania on into Charlotte. The kids then were transferred to a local hospital, uh, Carolina's Medical Center. And the next morning, they were transferred onto smaller aircraft that would then carry them onto Sioux City, Iowa. Within a few hours, the first child was in surgery, Doreen. And the other two children had their first surgeries within 24 hours. When Samaritan's Purse said, we're in, we just fell to our knees and wept and we praised God and Samaritan's Purse had our back the entire time. We still have to be cautious and uh, you know, every day is a, all right, good, this is a good day. Let's hope for another good day tomorrow. We have a God whose arms are never too short and he has wrapped his arms around these three kids to ensure that they again are a living legacy for their fallen classmates. Oh, yantunafrai sana, sana, sana. Mungu tuwa, eni mungu wa mitu wa 